Simons and welcome back to the channel. My name's Simon and today's video is focused on the iRacing heads up display, how to customize the display so you have it working in the best way for you. And if you have a triple screen setup, we'll show you how to move the UI elements onto your outer screens. This video is part of a broader series on the channel focused on iRacing optimization. So check back regularly for more setup guides. Okay, let's get to it. So first of all, what do we mean by the iRacing heads up display? I've loaded us into a test session so I can show you the two different types of heads up display that you can see whilst you're in iRacing. The most obvious one is the one in the car. So I'm just gonna jump in. Here we go. So as you can see right at the bottom of the screen, you can see the in pit lane, pit speed limit, current speed, and there's a whole bunch of other heads up display elements that can be shown here. If you hit Alt K, this will then bring up all of the different elements that are available to move, such as the lights, the virtual mirror, and there's a number of other settings that are on my outer screens. But what we mean by heads up display is all of these potential UI elements that iRacing can display whilst you're either in the car or actually whilst you're spectating as well, which I'm just going to show you. If we jump back out of the car, and again, I hit Alt K. You can see it's popped up a number of other elements. There's a couple of my side screens. There's a chat element over here. Uh, there is a camera tool key map over here. And there's a number of others, but it's a really useful feature to know that whilst you're in the car or whilst you're spectating or in a replay, if you hit Alt K, you can see the range of different heads up display that you can use, and then you can move them around to whatever suits you for your setup. To enable a couple of advanced features for the iRacing heads up display, there's two edits we need to make in the renderer dx11.ini file. So let's take a look at that. So I'll open up my iRacing folder. I'm going to open up my renderer dx11 monitor file because I'm running triple screens. We will head down to the user options section. And then there's two settings in here to pay attention to. The first one is drive UI full screen. Make sure this is set to one because if you're on a triple screen setup, this will allow you to move the heads up display elements into your outer screen so they won't be confined just to your center panel. And then secondly, force visible when move. This will show you all of the UI elements when it's set to one, when you hit Alt K rather than just the ones that are available for the session that you're in. So this allows you to move all of the elements and then to save them on exit for the next time you enter iRacing. So we're now back in a test session within iRacing and let me show you what's now possible that we've made those changes in the DX11 file. So we'll jump into the car, we will hit Alt K and then as before you can see the UI elements on the center screen, the lights, the mirror, the pit lane, the info message, but now things such as the flags, you know, you can move those off to your left hand screen with a triple screen setup. I could do the same on the right hand side. I tend to keep my flags just on the left. I could move the lights off screen should I want to. I could move the mirror to a position that I want to be. You basically have complete flexibility to move any of those UI elements onto any one of your three screens. Another functionality to pay attention to is this use custom HUD positions for this car. Super useful. This means you can save your heads up display positions for a particular car rather than having one for every car type. As it happens, I do have the same HUD layout for every car. I find that's okay for me, but if you tick that box, it would then save this particular layout just for this one car. And then you could do that for every car that you drive. And then if we jump back out and we look at when we're spectating or in the replay, the same applies. Hit Alt K again, and then any of the movable items that you have in this heads up display can be displayed on the center screen or can be displayed over to the side. If I pull over my entries list, you can see it here. I tend to keep that on my left hand monitor. Uh, I have chat on my right hand monitor, but I could bring it back into the center screen should I want to. So again, complete flexibility to move any of those UI elements wherever works best for you. 
The final thing I wanted to show you is how you can combine the iRacing heads up display with any other overlay programs that you might be running. And for me, I use Race Labs as my main source of overlay information. So I'm going to jump into the car and then I'm going to fire up Race Labs for you. And then as that loads, this is my default layout for when I'm running a race. And you can see that I've got this set up so that the iRacing heads up display aren't on top of the overlay for race labs or vice versa. And again, if I was to hit Alt K whilst I'm in the system, I would be able to make adjustments to the HUD if I wanted to move things around whilst I have race labs running. So I can make sure that when I'm in the car racing, that there isn't any overlaps and that the screen is looking as I want it to. That's all for this one. The iRacing heads up display might not look the prettiest, but it's a great way to access key information, whether you're spectating or driving during a session. Check back on the channel for more updates to our iRacing setup series. And if you have any suggestions, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in and catch you on the grid.